business or are you running a business? Valuation is the ultimate KPI. Hey there, it's Mike Langford. Welcome to another episode of the Modern Financial Advisor Podcast brought to you by Truelytics, the one and only comprehensive advisor transition management platform. This week on the show, I am joined by Brian Natal, Joe DeMarco, and Rick Wilkins, three of the founders of Elevate CPA Group. Now, don't worry, you're not going to need a double espresso or a Red Bull to stay awake during this episode. These are not your typical CPAs. The Elevate team bills itself as a strategic partner for RIAs looking to grow their businesses. And as you'll hear in a few minutes, they bring a lot more to your business than simply doing your taxes or creating financial statements. These guys move the needle. Now, before we jump into the podcast, mark your calendar for February 10th, 2021, because Jeremy Carnell, the CEO of Truelytics, Scott Wessel, the CEO of Skyview Partners, and I will be on a special episode of the Modern Financial Advisor podcast. Yeah, this show uh, for the second annual virtual financial advisor summit hosted by Broadridge Advisor Solutions and Advisorist. We're going to be focusing on key trends for advisor transition planning and M&A activity. So it's going to rock. It's going to be really, really cool. There's going to be a lot of other really good stuff as well at the uh, kind of virtual conference. Yeah virtual conference. It's really cool. That's what we're doing during COVID, right? We're all virtual. Anyway, if you want to learn more about the event, head on over to virtualfasummit.com where you can register to attend. It's going to be awesome. All right. Also, we have some big product news at Truelytics as well. The true performance model for valuation has received some major upgrades. The changes allow you to get a much more granular, meaningful, and actionable analysis for your business. If you're already a Truelytics user, make sure you log in and check out the new True Performance Revenue Stability Scorecard today. And if you're not yet a Truelytics user, maybe you're, you know, been listening to the show like Brian Natal from Elevate CPA Group, and you're like, that does sound interesting. Maybe I'll check it out. By the way, that's what Brian did. So yes, today is the day to do exactly that. Simply swing by truelytics.com and use the sign up button or reach out for a chat using the contact form or the little chat icon that's down in the lower right hand side of the webpage. Okay. What do you say? You ready? Let's get to the conversation with Brian, Joe, and Rick from Elevate CPA Group. Let's do it. Well, Rick, Brian, and Joe, uh, we're ready to go. I'm so excited nice. to have you on the show. So welcome to the Modern Financial Advisor Podcast. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. You yeah, appreciate it. So uh, I love that, you know, for those who are listening, tuning in and listening, uh, a little tip if you ever record a podcast, do allow a little bit of time for A, technical difficulties. You never know when they're going to arise. And B, a little conversational lubrication, if it, as it were, to get the things going. Because we're all amped. We've we spent some time with each other probably about 10 minutes before we click the record button. So this is really good. Uh, good morning. We're actually good afternoon to you guys. You're all East Coast, correct? Or no? We're, we're Central. So it's Central too. Yeah, like me. That's yep. right. Okay, great. Awesome. Yep. Perfect. Oh, we're all on the right time zone. This is fantastic. All right. Well, I'm really thrilled that you reached out, Brian. Uh, thank you for reaching out, kind of teeing up th this conversation. Or actually, Ian put us together, but uh, you were the first point of contact there uh, for this conversation. The three of you guys have gotten together and created a new firm called Elevate CPA Group. And at first, when Ian introduced us, and I, I read the email, I'm like, I, you know, I, I'm not 100% sure because they actually didn't include Elevate CPA Group in the email. It was, it was a, a different, I'm like, all right, I'm not 100% sure how a CPA group is going to fit in with this podcast, but I can roll. Uh, but now I know what, what what you guys do. So maybe we can introduce the firm kind of like, what was the aha moment that caused you to create a firm that focuses exclusively on serving RAAs and wealth management firms with all the stuff you do? Great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, we started this firm, what, about eight months now ago? It's been a been a long road getting it up and going, and we, we finally have launched. You know, Joe, Rick, and I were in a, a coaching group together, and, and one night we were having some wine and some cocktails, and Joe and I were talking and lamenting that 
we were too nice to be running a business and all the, the funny stories that happened to us because we are uh, too nice <laughs> with what we're doing. And, and that kind of started our relationship moving forward. And, and then fast forward about a year, we had, we had all met just to kind of talk business and, and get ideas and share information. And, and Joe came up with the idea that why don't we think about doing some joint marketing, you know, instead of each firm doing our own marketing, let's do something together and, and share the costs and, and see how we can do it. And from there, it, it, it kind of evolved that, and I'll, I'll have Joe tell you about more about that, but with their specialties and ours, we, we were able to come together and bring a, about a 50 person firm together to really focus on the RIA industry and bring a lot of expertise to it. Um, what do you want to add? Well said. Yeah, well said, Brian. Yeah, and, th and that, that, is, that is what happened. I mean, we, you know, we got to know each other through this consulting group, like Brian mentioned, and, you know, our, our, our respective CPA firms that, that we had, Brian being in Boulder, Colorado, us being right outside Chicago, complemented one another really well. And, you know, each of our firms, it, it was about 25 people with a professional staff and administrative team. But what we, what we recognized was that Rick and I, our firm, we've been specializing in the financial services area for, it's going on 11, 12 years now. And we, we really carved out a niche within that area with you know, independent broker dealers, advisory firms, and so on. And we work really hand in hand with a lot of these firms on the business side of things. And, and so when we when we were talking, we said there's definitely a niche in this in this in this area with with our IA firms. We have the background, with the experience to work with them. And what we were sort of missing was a was a, a another partner that had that that bench to bring in Ryan's in a state plant is an attorney and a CPA, does a lot of estate planning work. And we thought, gosh, they, he works with a lot of high net worth individuals with his team. So if we bring both firms together, it really could be a powerful source within the RIA industry. So that's how we sort of said, you know, if we strategically align and bring these firms together and specialize right into the RIA firm space, you know, it's a growing area. You're seeing a lot in, in terms of trends in the industry, you're seeing a lot of, of, of mention of you know, having a strong team, a strong back office, focus on your business. And a lot of times these, these RIA firms can't do that, pay attention to their clients and make sure their business is running well. And we thought the combination of both of our firms could provide those, those RIA firms the, the, the backing that they need to, to grow their respective practice. So that's how it came together. And like Brian said, eight months later, we've been working on the foundation behind it and just launched the site. So very, very excited. So Rick, what is it about the RIA and wealth management space that as you look at it, right, as, as, a, as a CPA firm, uh, that you say, this is a unique space that we, sh we, sh we should focus on uh, ex more exclusively, right? I mean, look, right. there's lots of profitable businesses out there, but you've chosen mm -hmm. a niche. Why did you choose this one? Well, I think, you know, as Joe mentioned, we've got about an 11 year history of the financial services world. And it, in conjunction with some of the other work that we've done in the past with helping clients grow, right? Uh, we, we, we certainly understand the, the RIA business, right? So it became to us, as you do more and more, right, you get more and more familiar. And with the use of some of the tools that we have, key performance indicators and, and, and things like that, we've really have now begun to focus on helping that world, helping those clients really, really grow into, into successful businesses. Because so, sometimes what we've seen in, in the RIA space is they have a deep concern for their clients' wealth and growth of the client's wealth. And sometimes they don't even know what their own, they, they, they know what their <laughs> clients are worth, but they don't even know what they're worth, you yeah, know, yeah. as far as the business is. And, and, and we kind of get that. So we, we try to drive that. We try to look at the, the kind of a short-term, mid-term, long-term with, with, the, with, the, with the firms. The short-term, you know, you kind of pick up some of the low-hanging fruit to help make them profitable. But really, 
at the end, it's really the long-term play. It's like, uh, how do I grow the value of my yeah. practice or, or my firm? And, 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 and how long is that going to be? And, 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 and how to do those types of things. And that's where we come in to help yeah. with that. It's really interesting that, you know, you, we spent a lot of time, at least I, I've spent a lot of time over the years, really evangelizing to the wealth management space that having a niche is important for them as well, right? That they should really, it doesn't have to be super, super narrow, but they should really get to know a customer type. Just like, as you're describing, you start to know right. the business. I, if I know your business better, I can serve you better. And then I, the next client that I bring on, I'm like, Hey, listen, I've already kind of solved that problem for another client who looks a lot mm -hmm. like you. I can help you as well. And the more I do, the better, hopefully, uh, you know, one of the interesting things you just hit on, though, there is some of these advisors, they don't necessarily know what their own worth is, right? as you mentioned, right. they don't know exactly, you know, how profitable their business is. And, you know, Terry Mullen, the founder of Truelytics, one of the co-founders of Truelytics, often says that when he speaks to an audience full of advisors, and he asks them how many of them have a P&L, he's surprised at how few hands grow, go up because, you know, again, these people, you know, they're, 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 they're small business owners, of mm -hmm. course, but oftentimes they're, they're solo operators and they they're running a, a, a book of business, right? right. They, 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 they got their start as, as salespeople. We, I think you and I, we talked about this on the prep call that many of them started when they were still called stockbrokers mm -hmm. and they've grown their business, their book of business, but they haven't really thought about it in the traditional senses. If you and I were to hang a shingle and start a business, uh, I'd love to hear your kind of perspectives on that because you talk a lot about, you echo a lot of the same things that Truelytics has been talking about since day one, right? helping you manage your business, help you have a more profitable, more efficient and more valuable business, right? That's where, where the scorecards with 50 plus KPIs mm -hmm. come from and talking about how those things contribute to the valuation of a firm. So I wonder like what your perspective is on that about, you know, helping advisors, REA firms kind of think of themselves more as businesses. Well, I think, and, and the other guys can jump in too, but what, what I think is we look at each individual RAA firm to kind of see what they're made up of and, and what they have, right? Maybe they're help with their client, look at their client base and, and then try to structure some long-term growth for them, right? Because, you know, to your point of the, P of the P&L, we, we've had some experiences where we'll sit and, and go through the P&L uh, with them. And sometimes they don't even know, you know, how it all works and how it all flows. And they, listen, I have cash in my account, so I must be doing okay, but there could be more cash in the account, right? If you do things <laughs> a little bit differently. So, so we do, we do look at, we do look at that and, and, and certainly try to try to help them maybe even on their looking at their client makeup, right? I mean, cause if you look at the value of a firm and, and I think that's really the end driver for me is to help them get to that point of what, what is their thing? What is their company worth? And then how to make it worth more. And you can look at the client makeup that they have, right? I mean, you know, if they have a, a I'll make it real simple, right? If they have an 85 year old uh, individual with $50 million invested, that's not a bad client to have, but uh, something happens, obviously, then to the 85 year old now, now what, right? Yeah. But if you have that $50 million, uh, 85 year old, but you also have the kids and grandkids and you have everybody interwoven in there and you're really focusing on that growth of that. I mean, it just adds exponential value to your RIA firm. So those are the things we, we try to look at to, to, just to make sure they have, uh, have, have a good balance and they, and they know yeah. what they have. It's really interesting before we jump on with you and, you mm -hmm. and Brian on, on this, uh, this topic, uh, uh, Brian, you and Joe. Uh, you know, one of the things that I've just and this is not to slice. So I want to make sure that I make the, the distinction here. We're, we're not, you know, I'm not hammering on advisors, mm -hmm. right? A lot of these folks are grow, have grown very successful businesses, mm -hmm. despite the fact that you will be surprised. And I think many advisors might be nodding their head at this, that there's a lot of advisors who did not go to college and study business. They weren't business majors. And, and many are, even if they were business majors, were not finance or accounting majors, right? That at some point in their career, whether it's early or a career transition, they made a decision to get into this business and, and they were brought in kind of again under a sales model. And so they became very good at selling, right? And that's a very large segment of our business that folks came in via the sales route. They weren't coming in this business because they listen, I love finance. I love investing. I, uh, I love helping people manage their money. I'm going to become a CFP and then that's how I'm going to start my career, right? Uh, so it's not surprising that there would be 
a knowledge gap when it comes to some of these business concepts. Is that making sense? Yeah, it, it, it does make sense. I mean, we see that in other fields as well, other industries as well. And that's what we try to provide is, you know, you, what, going back to your P&L point, it's like, okay, what does it, what does it mean? What, what do these numbers mean? Where do they come from? You know, yeah. um, what's the effect of, uh, of, you know, of certain expenses? What does that add? What does that do to my value? What does that do to my, some synergy if someone wants to come acquire me, right? Or, 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 or the other way, you want to purchase a firm, right? You got to be able to look at these numbers and, 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 and perform the right due diligence piece to know what it's worth and understand what the numbers are. And that's where we come in. And we understand yeah. the point that maybe the owners aren't that, they're, believe me, they're sophisticated. They know yeah. what they're doing, right? They know the top line, um, but it's just, just to help out, just to, just, just to go through it, make sure they really understand the flow of, of what happens. Yeah. And I, and I think, Rick, you know, more to that point, too, is, you know, that that adds a ton of value. There's no there's no doubt about that, because they are and it's definitely true. And, you know, you could you, you see it more and more, Mike, I'm sure with other advisory firms. But, you know, that attention that they have to spend towards their clients is becoming even more needed. Like clients, it, you know, it used to be before you pick up a client, you get their assets under management, you talk to them a couple of times a year and I'm, I'm going back a few years and hey, everything's fine. But now I think, you know, fees are compressing, competition is rising. There's a lot of guys that are, you know, just, just going independent, starting their own firms. And now it's becoming more so at least what we're seeing in the industry. You know, you have to do more. You have to, you have to help your clients plan. You have to, you have to be on top of all the tax regulations, rules, and so on, which are ever changing as we know now. So, so when we when we look at this, not only do these RIAs need to to understand their business, like Rick said, through having up to date financial statements every every month, looking at the numbers, looking at indicators, seeing what the value of that company is, but also you know you have to look at they need to provide more to their clients, and you're seeing like some of the big advisory firms that are out there that are acquiring a lot of you know a lot of firms, smaller firms, but you know, they go to well, we have everything in house. We we have a we have a legal counsel. We have tax folks in house. We have everybody. Well, it's hard for you know, smaller independents to 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 compete with that. When we looked at it, like, well, how can our fractional CFO services is going to bring that bench of hey, if one of if one of that RA for RA firms clients is high net worth individual, they have questions. You know, more times than not, that RA is not going to know the tax implications exactly in terms of what to do. And our service offering is, is going to be there to help them along the way. So it not only makes their firm more valuable, but it makes their clients' relationships with them more valuable. And I think that's, that's essential, you know, because it is becoming such a competitive landscape right now. Yeah. Brian, building on some of this stuff, on your website, elevatecpagroup.com for those who are what it'll be linked in the show notes by the way but just kind of throw it out there for those who are listening and just fire it up on their phone or their their computer a lot of your messaging is about growing a firm and we've mentioned that actually a couple of times here on the pod already i want to dive into what you think or what, what, what you talk to your clients about as some of the key factors for growth for a wealth management business because kind of as we were just kind of building on there, you know, a lot of advisors might not hunt, you know, they, they think of top line growth, of course, they think about bringing on new revenue, new clients and so forth. But to grow a business, it's not all about just bringing on the next client or more AUM. We're talking about some other growth things. So I wonder if you could maybe just kind of share some of the, what you think as key growth factors when you address that process. Yeah, I mean, I, I think our industry, the CPA industry, a lot of similarities, the RIA industry, you know, we're, we're kind of geared to, well, just do the work, build the hour, get the client in, everything will work out. It'll be fine. I think what we see is it doesn't always end up fine. You know, sometimes you can grow that top line, but you're eating it all up in your expenses or you have a capacity issue. And, and that's really something I, I think we can 
help quite a bit with is, is how do you think about how do I service these clients? How does the whole business service these clients? That, you know, a true business, I should be able to be gone and it's still running, it's still doing well. When it's all me, you know, everything stops when I'm gone. The clients only want to talk to me. That referral only wants to talk to me. So I think a lot of growing the business value is, is how do you start getting that, you know, for lack of a better term, that goodwill into your business, not just you. Mm. So building that up and, and really looking towards the future, it, yeah, it takes a long time to succession plan. And it's not a pleasant exercise for most of us <laughs> as, we, as we get older here. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's hard to flip the switch in, in one year you're out and maximize your value. So I, I think those things can really help. And, and how do you, you know, really, how do you build that model, build that team, whether it's in-house, whether it's contract, so that you, you do have capacity, you do have that firm goodwill. You can really start not just leveraging your own contacts, but your team's contacts to bring in those clients, bring in the right relationships and service them well and, and, and not have that capacity issue. You know, I, I think we all suffer from points of contact when you're in the service world that you get a lot of points of contact and that takes a lot of time. Yeah. And so it's really, how do you get those spread out? How do you get the right points of contact? So you're serving being those high value clients and finding those next high value clients. And those are hard things without a lot of focus on it and paying attention to what you're doing. I love that you brought that up and it kind of really leads me into the next thing I, I wanted to talk to you guys about is how you at, at Elevate are actually helping RAA firms grow. And, and I think you teed it up like perfectly. Like so we're in the golf course. I'm going to be you know, on your team. It's going to be great. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I think a lot of people, when you think of a CPA firm, you think accounting, you think, okay, you're going to do my P&L. You're going to help me with my taxes, right? Like it just, or, you know, or you help me run the numbers, you know, and, and understand where I can save some money. Right. I, I think that's often the mindset that a lot of folks have and I'm sure some of the RIA, especially, you know, maybe if they're operating as a solo, might be thinking, yeah, this is, that's, that's what, of course, I want a CPA to do my taxes and kind of do my finances. But you're talking about something discreetly different. You're, you're talking about high level business analysis and advice. So maybe we can kind of take a person, take, take us through, like, what does that look like? So if I come to you and I say, all right, gents, you know, I've built this business. I'm up to $50 million AUM. I'm rocking solo. How can you help me? I want to, I want to grow, you know, to 200 million AUM in the next five, 10 years. I think that's a wonderful, you know, the first thing we, we do is really look at True Lilix, you know, get their info entered, get it, you know, correct in there. And that'll help identify where some of their key factors are, are not up to snuff. You know, where we're, we're just, we're lagging behind. And, and it's so powerful. It, it gives, what is it, 50 different KPIs that yeah. can really help us figure out where in the short run, like Rick was saying, those low-hanging fruit that we can really cheer up and start, start getting more valuable. But then I think on the long run, you know, and Rick or Joe, maybe you're better talking about us, but it's really knowing your numbers. You got to know your numbers and then have somebody, that's where we come in, to help not only analyze those, but solve those problems. And you need to have those numbers timely, right? You can't, you can't look at a, a close of the year or a close of a month, you know, four months down the road. It doesn't really help. You're being super reactive. So we like to try to jump in there and be proactive, even to a point where if we're looking at, you know, uh, some of the books and records, which is like we said, it, that's the basic, basic service. But if we, if we have access to that and can jump in there and, and, and hopefully even spearhead that off before a month is even over, right? I mean, you're just trying to, 
as a CFO, and, and I had I was actually one as I took a break from the CPA world for about 20 months. Um, I was a CFO at a company, and you really need to know every day. You know, you need to know what those numbers are, or at least have or at least have access to it. Right, something that is that's tangible that you can that you know is up to date to help you make a decision if something needs to be made. Yeah, and and it's so it's so true. I mean, like like Mike, you said. I mean, half of these, if not more, these firms probably don't have updated statements. And you know, we were talking before the podcast, just bringing up a case study. But it was it was interesting because we 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 recently picked up an an RA firm on the East Coast and um, started working. And of course, he had a local relationship, like you said. He he's about one hundred and fifty million in AUM about 10 people at the firm and he had a local firm doing, doing his work that didn't have, you know, the background in the, in the RA space. And so we connected, it went well and continued to show our, our background and the value that, that comes with it. And he immediately, right when we started working, it was crazy to see, but he actually prepaid his accounting firm, the local firm for the whole year. And he was supposed to have monthly financial statements done. I think he was on the month of September and still didn't have financials done from the firm. Wow. And so it it, it starts to really show, I mean, this is a pretty well-established firm. He's out acquiring other smaller RIA firms. And we we right when we started working with him, you know, you bring up some of the growth, the growth areas. Just the mere fact that we got his books under control immediately, we issued financials in October, November, and now December timely, and we were able to utilize that information just to sit down with him through a Zoom call and go through just a, hey, here's where all your cash was spent, Here, here's a tax projection, here are some areas, and through that conversation, what came of it was two things. One, he was considering selling some of the business to one of his employees. So we were able to help him with that. Two, he just acquired another firm. We were able to help him with that. So just through the tax planning, there was saved money there just because it was more proactive rather than it happening on April 15th of the following year. So it just, it, it really goes to Brian and, and Rick's points that we're, we're getting more involved, more timely using these indicators to help them manage and grow their business that I'm not sure a lot of a lot of attention is spent on that and it does become important if you want to grow your business if you're comfortable just hey here's my book i'm running a silo you know i'm fine with what i'm making well that's not the type of firms we want to work with we want firms that are hey this is what i have and this is where i want to be and we want to help them get there you know you know it's interesting it's so it's so fascinating to me to do as you think about this too in in addition to Think about growing your business, right? If you're going to think about growing your business, you have to be able to forecast forward. And that's, by the way, for those who may be wondering, the distinction of a, of a CFO is somebody who thinks about the future of the business. Finance is forward looking, right? Accounting is point in time or backward looking, like what happened. And, I, and I'm not 100% sure. I don't want to sound like I'm insulting the advisor population, but that, that they may not be aware of that. But that, that's really where it comes in, right? If you're th- having a CFO is looking at your business and helping you model forward and, 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 and chart a path forward. But one of the things that I have found analyzing the business, and this is one of the things that I, I, I'm most excited about when, with the Trulytics model is, it can also help you with identify risks to your business, right? So even if you're thinking, to, as you, you were just mentioning that, ah, you know, aggressive growth is not my thing. I'm at the harvest stage of my business. I'm 60 years old. I'm, you know, I'm making half a million dollars a year. This is great. I might sell a piece of the business and think about succession planning, but you know, growth isn't my thing. It still makes sense to, to do this, right? You could identify like your business might shrink if you don't tackle some of these problems that we can see in the business. So getting to the Trulytics stuff that you teed up, Brian. And by the way, using Trulytics is not a prerequisite to get on mm. this show. It does help, by the way. But no. if you're an uh, active listener to the show, you know that we don't always you know, talk about the use of Trulytics on the show. Uh, we just try to put out some really good content that's interesting and informative and hopefully helpful for the community. But in, in your case, it's obviously very, very relevant that you're using the tool in a unique way in your business to help help the client. So I wonder if you wouldn't mind sharing how you and the team are using it. And I, I guess I kind of uh, 
teed it up for you guys a little bit. Uh, so I wonder if you, you might share like how you're using it uh, and some of the benefits you're seeing for, for RA clients. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll pick on Rick a little. He was uh, in the process of developing a sweet spreadsheet to do all this. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really high tech. And for anybody listening that would like to purchase that, it's uh, free. So. <laughs> <laughs> You'll actually pay them to take it. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because I actually, our, our marketing team sent us, hey, here's a podcast you might want to listen to. and I think I was cooking and had it in my ear. And, uh, it was you, Mike, and they kept, you know, you, it was, uh, Terry was on it and talking yeah. about True Relix and I think, holy smokes, this might be a great answer. Went on and it just had all those pieces that we really wanted to see to help, help businesses grow. I mean, I think without the KPIs, without the huge number of um, firms they have in there to compare against, to pull the data from. It, it's really hard, you know, it's it's hard to know, are we hitting the right ones? Are we focusing on the right ones? And uh, once we ran through the, the uh, an example of it and saw the power of it, we were sold that, you know, bringing the personal touch, bringing our CFO knowledge, tax knowledge, accounting knowledge, you know, just running a business knowledge. We, we, one of the fun things about being a CPA, and sometimes there's not a lot, but one of the fun things, <laughs> we get, you know, we get to be a, a business owner with hundreds of clients. You know, they're coming to us and they're asking us all sorts of questions about their business. And it's not, it's, it's not just tax and accounting. It's, it's, everything that's on their mind. They often don't have somebody else to talk to. So we truly learn a lot of this stuff as you go and that we put into play in our businesses and we can bring to the table. So kind of bringing those together has helped a ton. And, and it's a roadmap for us. You know, it helps us pick out what we want to target in small chunks, make those little improvements every week, month, quarter, and those start building up. And over the course of years or a year, you, you start seeing some real changes. But without that pool, it's, it's you know, as good as the Rick spreadsheet was, <laughs> it's gonna be hard to, to get the data behind it to really have really good numbers to go by. And, and Brian, you know, even, even bringing that up, because I remember when you went through that, the process with the one client and they loved it and, and it, they were, they had a great business and they had the people that, at that RA firm in the right positions, but just some of the, the, like you mentioned, like those risks that came up that were non-financial, you know, that you could see like, oh, your grade is a C plus and you need to work on this area. Well, didn't that come of that though? Like it, it wasn't, it wasn't all numbers based, like, you know, you're not meeting this in terms of AUM or so on, right? Yeah. A big part of theirs was they they had these younger key advisors that were their future right. and they didn't have any sort of non-competes or plan towards them to both keep them in the business and and hold the business value and you know to show them that path to ownership it was a big risk i mean they you know we all know so somebody gets close with clients and they leave that's an easy way to start losing clients. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah. you know, that was a relatively simple one, but th there were some inter and interesting risks. And, and this particular client is very business savvy, but as we were going through it, he was kind of shaking his head going, yeah, we got to look at that. We got to, we got to focus on that. And, and it's been nice as a, as a thing to meet with them on a court, how are we doing? How are we getting there? Who do we need to contact? And, and pushing and getting those behind them. And there's some of the really hard things to focus on, right? Yeah. It, it's not easy to focus on who's going to take over the firm or what happens if you get hit by a bus. The, you, know, you know, it's interesting. So my daughter plays basketball and the team she's on right now is a hot mess. It just is. Unfortunately, uh, it's kind of challenging, right? So, you know, watching them just get smoked on the court. 
So I don't envy the coach because there has, there, there's, you're going to have to address a lot, right? Like it's like, and what do you fix first? Right? Like, yeah, the, the easy answer is like, what's wrong with this team? Oh, all of it. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, there, and there's so many big things we need to do, but we, we have a limited time or a limited budget, right. Or uh, limited other resources, human resources. In mm-hmm. the case of, you know, the coach, you know, there's only one coach is not an assistant coach and she's wearing a mask and practice time is limited and it, all this type of stuff. Uh, it's an e- easy to digest analogy for, for you as a team, you know, thinking of yourselves as coaches. And I'm not saying that every client that comes to you is a hot mess. I, I would assume that most of them that, that come to you uh, are at some level of, of good standing and, and they're looking to accomplish more, right? They're not looking to, hey, listen, I'm a disaster, help me. You know, I'm, sure, I'm sure those exist. But how do you go about, or, or maybe a better way is like, other like, two or three types of things where you're like, Hey, listen, this is what we look at first beyond the financials. Like these are the things we're going to look at operationally or process wise, uh, structurally in your business that we think give us solid bang for the buck and allow us to make the greatest improvements earliest in the process as possible so that you can start along that growth path that you guys are looking to do with your clients. I think, you know, and and Rick, I'd love for you to talk about this a little bit because you know, with your background and, and being accredited to do valuations, mm-hmm. again, going back to this Trulytics tool and your your unbelievable spreadsheet that you were creating initially, you know, but when when we when we came upon Trulytics and just the amount of data that was all in one spot, using that data not only on the KPI side, but even on the valuation side, Rick. I mean, maybe you could talk about like just set, setting the, if you will, benchmark bogey of when we come into a client, like this is what you're worth. This is where we want to right. get you to. Yeah. 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 We, we'll, we typically will, we'll take a look to see where they are currently, right. On, on a value. And then, you know, just in conversations with, with the owners or owner, you know, kind of where, where do you want to go? Right. What's, as I mentioned before, what's, what's the end game and then, and then how do we, how do we get there? And I think with the use of, of the Trulytics tool in, 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 in these be quarterly meetings, semi-annual, whatever the person would want, we could certainly we have goals set each, each time of what, what do we want to hit? What do we want to do? What do, we need to, what do we need to look at? And not strictly from the financial side, but also, you know, as Brian mentioned, even, you know, you might have some key employees you want to try to keep and, and that's going to help grow the firm as well. Um, and, and I think that's, that. and you really need to have the, if you don't have the buy-in of the management group, it, it just, it's not going to work, right? It's not going to work just like any, just like any business, right? If you don't have that owner buy-in of doing something or, or, or just partially doing it or expecting like the team to do it one way and you do it the other way, it doesn't always quite work that way either, but that, that's really what we're looking for. And then, and then, and then to provide it, it's a slow process, just like just like any just like their investments that their clients have. You, you don't you don't double money in 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 a year probably, right? It might take that eight year yeah. clip or whatever. You do you do in this market though, you, right? You do in this market, absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. And and if you and if you want to subscribe to my spreadsheet, you could really do <laughs> well. Let's say. So, uh, you know, as and a we were covering uh, spreadsheet jockey one day, one uh, earlier yeah. in my career, that's uh, I spent pretty much every day, all day banging yeah. away at a spreadsheet. I could appreciate yeah. your, 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 your craft. Yeah. Well, right? we, 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 we talked about technology earlier, uh, Mike, right. We talked about te- technology early and, and the changes that have happened in the last 20, 30 years, you know, especially with our kids. But, uh, I did not develop it on a quattro pro or Lotus one, two, three. It is on oh. Excel. Yes. So it is, it is high tech. So okay, there you go. There you go. <laughs> anyways, but, <laughs> but and, and really, anyways, uh, on to, from Rick's, Rick's point there, Mike, I mean, at, at least for us, I mean, and, and the types of businesses that we're in the RIA business, the, the CPA business, I mean, we're doing like Brian said, essentially <laughs> the same thing. You know, we're serve, mm-hmm. we're trying to bring on new clients, service our, our existing clients and grow the value of, of, of our firm. And at least, you know, for the three of us, we, we didn't invest in, I wish we did, but, you know, we didn't invest in Tesla, you know, a year ago, at least, yeah. and now, you know, gotten 10 times back our money. So at the end of the day, our respective firm, these are our biggest assets. This is, this is our asset. This is what we're trying to grow. 
and monetize in 15, 20 years, whatever it may be. And, and I'm sure a lot, the, the biggest asset for these RIA firms is what the, the business that they're working on with their clients. And it's a great business. It's recurring revenue as long as they're servicing their clients and bringing value. And we just know, you know if that's your biggest asset, why not utilize all the tools you can, you know, Trulytics, tax advice, you know, why not, you know, you know, forward thinking, use all those tools to make that business more valuable. And we do it, you know, with our, within our firm and, and, you know, and we're just thinking, why wouldn't you do it? Because it is probably your biggest asset. And if you don't, it may shrink, you know? So, right. so to Rick's point, you know, we, you know, in your question, like that, that sort of benchmark, that, that base, like, here's where you're at now. That's what we want to start with and probably falling off of that. So there's going to be two or three things that come up that conversation to say, we're going to get there. It's going to take some time, but we're going to be there along the way as your partner to get you there. And that's, right. and I think that's just critical. Right. Yeah. And like Joe said, with the use of Trulytics and just the use of the experience we have with other RIAs that are in, in maybe similar situations, we could certainly throw some suggestions that way as well and see if they work. Yeah. And, and, and furthermore, you know, just being in the space for so long and, and, you know, again, Mike, you know, we've been doing, I know the industry as well on the broker dealer and the advisory side. Um, we've built a, a, a really good connection base, whether it be on the compliance side and the legal side on the IT side. So having that, if you will, network, the, those questions come up that we're not going to be able to answer. Like a compliance question, what should we do? You know, we're not going to just make something up, right? So, but, but you know, I, I, yeah, we're just going to make it up. And, no, not every and, time. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll give a Rick spreadsheet. <laughs> I know. But, but, you know, Rick, but now I kind of feel like yeah. I need to see this spreadsheet. It's getting <laughs> oh, famous. It's, it's, yeah. But it does. It's, for, it. another, it's, it's, it's for, for another podcast. For another podcast. Awesome. But it does give them that, you know, that ability to, to be able to, to tap into that, to, have go-tos to say they we, we can help them on on all levels, which I think just adds more to their value. Yeah, that's fantastic. Right. Yeah, I, I think just one other point. I, I think education, you know, and, and that's part of that onboarding is getting the financial, getting management reports, you know, so yeah. clients get used to seeing it on a monthly basis. You can start spotting trends with us and, and know what to expect. And then I think a thing we all, as business owners in a kind of a professional setting, suffer from is we think we can do it all. Mm. Oh, I'll, I'll, I do the accounting. I do it, you know, every six months. I sit down and with a beer with my bank statements, I put it in. Well, is that really the best use of your time? Yeah. And, and I think that also is something people got to constantly think about is that their time is limited and, and it's very valuable. Mm. You know, don't spend time on this stuff you don't need to. Spend an hour, not 10 hours, and get out and service your clients, get more clients. That's going to bring you a lot more value than, you know, anything you're paying a, a consultant or an employee to do. Uh, and, and that's a hard mindset for business owner. Adding to that, you have to keep in mind too, RA firms are regulated. And you know, we haven't really talked about that point very much, but whether you're regulated at the state level or the SEC level, I mean, there are requirements there. So so not only do you want to grow your value through forward thinking and and and, and freeing up time, but I think you also need to be cognizant, especially with the incoming administration that regulation may increase in this area. Um, we, we, we all know on the broker dealer side, it's, it's extensive. And, and on the RIA side, it's, it's not nearly as much. So over time with the growth in this area, I'm sure there'll be regulation. And with that, you have to, you have to stay aware of that and, and follow, like Rick said, the books and records rule. Um, Make sure, make sure that's in, it, make sure that's in place. If there is a net capital rule for your state or whatever, you know, make sure that you're meeting that. Because while you're growing a firm, you don't want to get tripped up on on, on regulation, which could happen. And our again, our background in the industry uh, helps you navigate helps these firms navigate through that process as well. So, just wanted to add to that. 
That's uh, great. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, I, I love that you guys kind of sort of closed it out there because, you know, we started the conversation about kind of helping RIAs, particularly those who, you know, got their started kind of, like I said, as stockbrokers or you know, kind of came in with a, with a sales model, building their book of business and helping them transition to, to more of a business owner mindset. And one of the things you said, Brian, is, is, is so spot on is like starting to recognize that your time is the most valuable asset. Your focus on interacting with clients or, or managing the business, like hiring new advisors into the firm or whatever that is, is extraordinarily valuable to the growth of your business. And if, if all your time, right, is being spent on other things, right, the kind of more clerical things that can be done by somebody else, uh, you, you might want to readjust that investment of time. Uh, so to close it out here, it's been a fantastic conversation, by the way, I think. What is the right profile for an RIA for you and the team at Elevate? Uh, yeah, I kind of tiptoed around this, but you know, mm -hmm. most RIAs are really, really small businesses, right? right? They range from solo advisor shops, and we, we, we see the ones that have dozens and dozens of RIAs. But, you know, and going and doing a little bit of the analysis, the overwhelming majority of RIA firms have fewer than five advisors at them. Right. So how does an advisor recognize or RIA recognize like, all right, we're at the point now where we need to reach out to elevate if we're right. going to grow the business. Is it, is that that solo shop or is it multi-advisor? What is it? The well, I can, I can, like? st I can start answering that. And, and I'm not an attorney, but Brian is, but I'm going to give you a, an attorney answer and in the, and it's depends, right? Okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm, I, you know, I took enough shots on my spreadsheet. I get dig into an attorney every now and then, there right? You go. There so you go. anyways, um, you know, it, it, it does, it truly does depend because we, we do have a range of what we're, what we're looking for, looking at which we think is the sweet spot and the target, mm -hmm. but it could be, you could have a startup RIA, but if you have that, that drive and the will to, to grow the firm, to grow the RIA practice and the firm. And, and, and really, you know, want to bring, uh, bring someone in from the beginning to help with that. We'd love to do that. I mean, to get on the ground floor or somebody to, to do that type of work would, would be phenomenal. But I think, you know, for, for the ones we're looking at, I mean, our sweet spot is probably in that, uh, let, let's say 80 million to 150 million AUM range. Okay. But again, it, it, it does, it, 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 it does depend. It depends on what the person, it, one, it depends on what, what they want to do, where they want to go with, 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 the, with the firm. And the sooner, if, if, if your goal is to uh, even to, you know, uh, you know, acquire another firm or sell your firm, whatever it might be, it, to get in right now, right? Let's do it now and, and start that process, regardless of what your size is, That's if, really smart. If, if, if it's worth looking at. Very I mean, we're not going to turn someone down because it's just this, this single advisor shop and, and uh, we'll, we'll certainly take a look at it. That mindset to grow that Rick was talking about is so huge. Um, that mindset to build a business. You know, Joe and I talked early on that there's a lot of advisors who, yeah, I don't care. You know, I, I know <laughs> I have money at the end of the day in my bank. By the way. It's a great That's fit. very common in this space. It really is more common than people realize. I mean, you, you right. know, when you start making $300,000 a year and you work 30 hours a week and play a crap ton of golf, right. Right. it's a pretty sweet lifestyle, right? It you know, is. and so for many of those guys, you're like, growth sounds like work, right? Yeah, like, and right. again, I'm not besmirching them. Like if you've yeah. got that gig, good for you. Now, I would still advise you talk to somebody to make sure you mm. have some serious risk to that lifestyle you've built, but sure. there's nothing wrong with a lifestyle business. Uh, but uh, you guys are, are, are looking for advisors who are looking to grow that are looking to kind of make their business more stable and, and hopefully uh, at, at some point in time, valuable for an eventual exit or uh, glide path uh, out of the business if they, should they choose. Well, gentlemen, this has been a fantastic conversation. I really appreciate you carving out the time today to, sure. to spend a little bit with me. I always enjoy our conversation. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very sure. much. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate thank it. you, Mike. Really appreciate Perfect. it. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening to this episode of the Modern Financial Advisor Podcast. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. Also, huge thanks to Brian, Joe, and Rick from Elevate CPA Group. I really enjoyed this conversation. It's so cool when you get to meet people who are just dialing in on our space and making a big difference. As always, make sure you like and subscribe to this podcast 
on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, the YouTubes, wherever you like to get your podcast jam on. And make sure you leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you have a question or a suggestion for a guest for the show, love to hear from you. So you can hit us up on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. Again, YouTube, lots of comment options there. And of course, you can hit us up, podcast at truelytics.com. I'm also at Mike Langford pretty much everywhere. By the way, this plea for sending people to us who want to hear from you, want to get you on the show and all that type of stuff, it really works. A lot of the guests, I know I say this a lot, come to us from people who are reaching out and saying, I'd like to be on the show or I'd like to suggest somebody who I think would be good for the Modern Financial Advisor podcast. So keep those coming. Also, that's how we're, we got invited to that second annual virtual financial advisor event hosted by Broadridge and the advisorist, right? So really, really cool stuff. The show's working. We're getting out there. It's really great to have uh, this community being so vibrant. And I, I really appreciate all of you who listen and now watch the show, okay? Hope you're doing well. Make sure you are wearing that mask, keeping your distance, and being nice to each other, okay? That's part of the community. Be nice to each other, not just us on the show, but everybody else you encounter if you can, okay? We'll talk to you next time on the Modern Financial Advisor Podcast. See ya. Bye.